Hello. With this video we are going to look at the LiDAR tools available for point classification in PLS CAD. As shown in the example model, we have a project with unclassified data. If we zoom in close in the plan view, we could see more dense data in the area of the structures and wires. If we rotate this view, we can then see the structure and wire points more clearly above the ground. The first step in using the LiDAR tools is to classify the ground in the model. You can go to Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Ground Point Classification, which will bring up the dialog box shown, where you can select the mandatory or optional feature codes for the ground. We have no mandatory points in this model, but we can go to the optional feature codes and select the 200 feature code, which are the unclassified points. The next section of the dialog box allows you to select the grid size for the tiles to identify the lowest point in each tile. The smaller the tile size, the more accurate your ground model will be. For this example, we will use a tile size of 10 feet. You can also choose whether to include just the lowest point in each tile or to also make further refining passes to include any points that fall below the initial surface created from the low points. You can also choose to show markers and modify the feature codes of these ground points. For this example, we will not use markers and use the 199 ground classify feature code for the classified ground. After the program has classified the ground points, it will also create a surface model from these points. You can display this surface model by going to Train 10 Display Options and choosing to show the unrendered triangle outlines. We'll go ahead and turn off the points so you can see the model. Then we'll turn the points back on. And then we can turn that surface model off again. With the creation of the tin, you can then recalculate the unclassified points with a XYZ plus height above 10 instead of the XYZ value, which makes it easier to filter out the wire and structure points as they are normally a good distance above the ground. You can do this by going to the Terrain 10, 10 interpolation of Z and H for non-ground survey points, and we can select which points to calculate H for and in this model we will just calculate it for the unclassified data. After calculating the H for these points we can go to the Terrain Survey Data Display Options to filter out the points we know are not wire. So in this dialog, we can select to draw only points in a certain height range. Since we know the voltage of the line, we will assume all wires are at least 10 feet above the ground and under 300 feet above the ground. So you can select the draw only points with H and range specified to the right and enter the range from 10 to 300 feet. Now when we view the data, it is much cleaner and mainly we see just the wires and structures and any obstacles 10 feet or more above the ground. As we zoom in, we can see some of the obstacles may be vegetation or buildings.
Now it is very easy and quick to create a rough alignment based on the structures in the plan view. You can go to Terrain Alignments, New Alignment to start adding PIs to the model for the project. We have turned on the option to automatically interpolate Z from the 10 and create a PI feature code point in the model. We will go ahead and add a PI point to each structure location, but you could use an automatic alignment if you had a pre-classified alignment route. After creating the alignment, we will go back to the 3D view and then go to the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Find Wire Points command. You'll notice that we have a tab for Filter Survey Data where we can change the height of points displayed or feature codes displayed. This is similar to the Terrain Survey Data Display Options dialog box and we'll update that. We'll go ahead and change the minimum height of the points to 20 feet and we'll remove most of the obstacles that are definitely not wire. Then go back to the Wire Feature Code tab where you can select the feature code to assign to wire points, which we've used as 299 wire classify in this example. We can also input some items for the bundle thickness and vertical spacing between phases. For this voltage, we can go ahead with a liberal bundle thickness since the phase spacing is so large. So we can input 3 foot for the bun bundle thickness, so we can make sure to take into account any accuracy problems we may have in the data. We can also input 10 feet for the vertical spacing between phases. You will want to alter these values dependent on the voltage and spacing of the lines you are wanting to classify. Now you will see blue points where we have identified the wire data points. The next step is to identify possible structure points. You can do this with the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Find Structure Points command. As you can see, there is another Filter Survey Data tab you can use if you would like, but you can also pick a feature code for Structure Tops and Points in the Structure Feature Codes tab. We'll pick Feature Code 399 for Structure Tops and 499 for Structure Classify Points. The Wire Feature Code 299 is already populated in the menu, and we can enter a structure radius of 65 feet to help identify the structure points and the structure tops. Again, these values would be dependent on the structures and phase spacing for your line. After this process, you will see that the possible structure points are shown with green points. As you will see, it may identify wire near, near the structure as structure points, but the blue wire points are dense enough to give good identification for the graphical sagging of a model and identification of the attachment points in the next few tools. The next tool you may find useful is the Terrain Edit LiDAR Tools Find Centroids of Structure Points, which will create a point at the centroid of a group of points that you may find useful for further refinement of your alignment. At the top of the dialog, you can pick which feature codes to use with a typical filter and then assign the feature code you wish to be created, as well as the separation of points to use for the group. We'll go ahead and use 300 feet for this model, as none of our structures are within 300 feet of one another. We'll also go ahead and leave the markers on and make the Z compute from the 10 based on the XY location of the centroid. I have selected the feature code 899 for the structure centroid. Since the centroid points are located at ground level, we will need to revisit the Terrain Survey Data Display Options dialog box, choose the option to show just the feature codes we would like to see, and not show the unclassified data and remove the height restriction. After doing this, we can see the marker showing the points used to calculate the centroid point, which we can clear by hitting the F5 key. Then we can go to the plan view and see how the centroids are shown in relation to the structures. These may be used to further refine locations of structures or PIs.
The next step is to find the attachment points for the structures. We'll go back to the 3D view to see these points. Finding attachment points is a two-step process. The first is to identify catenary curves that may fit through our classified wire points and then extend these catenaries to see where they intersect. First you can go to the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Catenaries, Fit Catenaries. And you can input the feature code to use for the fit which is our classified wire feature code. And then if you have structure, base, or tops you could use those for further refinement. If you have a PI at your structure locations then you do not need to input anything in these dialog spots. You can also tweak your bundle thickness and also limit the catenary fit parameters based on height, length, and whether it is within the corridor. This is useful when trying to limit the erroneous creation of catenaries on crossing spans. For this model, we will limit the height to 20 feet and the cord length to 350 feet since none of our spans are shorter than that. We will also put the max height at 300 feet. After hitting OK, you will be left with markers of catenary curves that fit through the points. You can see them better when we turn off the point symbols. As you can see, the program has identified catenary curves in these locations. In the case where it may have identified a curve that you did not want to use to find attachments, for example in a crossing span, you can use the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Catenaries, Toggle On, Off to turn them on or off. When you de deactivate a curve, it will become dashed. When you activate it, then it will return solid. The way that the attachments are identified is by extending these catenaries to where they cross and placing the attachment point at this crossing. I will go ahead and turn our points back on. Then we can go to Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Attachments, Find Attachments, where you can filter the data or you can select feature codes to use for dead end and suspension attachments. When you hit OK, the program will determine where these catenaries meet and make some assumptions on what it may consider dead ends or suspension attachments. If you zoom in on a suspension structure, you will see that the attachments are represented with an open circle and the dead end attachments are represented with filled squares. If they show up in the wrong area, for example like this dead end, you can use the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Attachments, Move Attachments command to move them. For example, like this box arm on the dead end tower, you can move them to the tip of the box arm instead of where the catenaries meet. If an attachment type has been misidentified, you can use the Terrain, Edit, LiDAR Tools, Attachments, Toggle Attachment Type command to go between dead end or suspension type attachments. After removing the markers, you can see that the LiDAR tools can be used to quickly and accurately classify your data so you can begin the modeling process in PLSCAD. An excellent view to see how well these attachment points match the survey data is the cross-section view.